Hey everyone! And welcome back to another Video Wednesday. And today we actually have something really fun. Our friend Manny Velasquez has a podcast and he's invited us to be guests on his podcast to talk about a movie that we have coming out, our YouTube show, and everything else that's going on in our lives. That's right. In fact, he's calling us right now, so I'm going to answer that. Hi, and welcome to Sequelitis. This is Manny, and joining me on this episode are a couple of uh, special friends of mine, Josephine Hees and Everett Aponte. They're an acting couple in Los Angeles with a fantastic YouTube channel that you should definitely check out, Everjo Productions. And so we are going to get into a little bit of their background working in the industry, the films that they're working on, and also uh, their adventures in um, the, uh, the pandemic times. So <laughs> welcome to Sequelitis. Thank you, Manny. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for joining me. So uh, I'd like to start off just uh, getting background for each of you uh, because that's, that's pretty interesting. Um, you guys aren't just, you know, a uh, couple of people that, you know, happen to move from somewhere in the Midwest to Los Angeles and just met up. Like, it, it goes a lot further than that. Um, many, many, many hundreds, uh, sometimes thousands of miles. So let me let you take it away. Um, so right before Everett met, I was actually in acting school in Germany. I was getting my associate's degree as an actor and as a stunt uh, performer. And I met um, a producer through a, a friend that we had in common. And that producer said, hey, I'm going to shoot a movie at the end of the summer. Do you want to audition for it? And I was like, OK, sure. He was like, I really need you to speak English really well. I'm like, oh, gosh, so nervous. And so I sent this little videotape. I think it was like, I want to say it was like Cinderella story, like the one with Hilary Duff. So like probably the best monologue you could find. And I send that in, and they're like, oh, yeah, you got the part. Just come on over to this teeny tiny small town and shoot a movie with us. Like, not a small town. Like, nowhere. <laughs> it's literally, there's two houses. But it was great. So that's, I went there, and that's how I met this one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, my background is a little lengthier. I'll try to give you the short version. Um, uh, I graduated film school from the University of Texas at Austin, shot a short film in Puerto Rico, um, which got me into about 45 uh, film festivals. Um, then I tried to shoot a feature film due to some unfortunate circumstances it, you know, fell through. So I sort of lost it, went and taught English in Korea, and then shot a short film there so realized that you know I still had it in me I needed I just being in the movie industry is just what I was born to do so I came back to America wrote a script shot a feature film tried to take that feature film and sell it on the markets but that's when I learned the hard way that um, you don't want to make an art house movie with no names but when I did that at the American film market in 2011 I met a fellow named Nico Sentner who was the producer of movies in Germany and also a distributor for, for Germany. So he was a buyer and a seller. He was working on producing Atomic Eden at the time and he fell in love with me when he found out that I was from Texas. He uh, <laughs> uh, basically wrote a part specifically for me to play in Atomic Eden. And so we kept in touch and kept in touch. And when it was very close to shooting time, he said, look, man, I need help to pick this part, which was her role. But um, so he had like three actresses and he sent me videos for all three. And so I watched all three of them and I said, yeah, I think you should get her. Uh, and I'm not kidding. The reasoning behind it was because she seemed like she would work well with us. Because the other ones looked very snooty. Like, they looked like they'd be a diva. So I actually contributed into meeting her <laughs> eventually. Like, when I first met you, you would always wear your cowboy hat. Because he bought this fancy hat and he would never take it off. It was like glued to him. He had long hair and like a huge bushy beard. And he wore cowboy boots. Like, you looked ridiculous the whole movie. There is one review um, of the movie that the reviewer literally said... Everett Aponte seems to be the only actor in this movie 
that knows what kind of movie he is in. <laughs> uh, one thing, one thing I do want to uh, ask though, because I think this really comes across in how they portray your character, and I think that's the reason why it works so well for you is you like just embraced it. Germans love cowboys, right? Yes. Like Germans like have a fascination with like Texas and cowboys and like they life sure out do. on the range and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, when I first met Nico, I mean, I mean, I first met him. We got together. We got we got uh, along really well. Uh, when he when he asked me where I'm from, I'm like, well, I'm from Texas. He's like, no, you're not. You know, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I am, man. And he's he's like, no, 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 no. And he pulls out his phone and shows me a picture of someone from Texas. And he goes, this guy's from Texas because he met him on another <laughs> film market. And he's like, this guy's from Texas. And I take one look, not even like one second, two seconds. I look at it and go, oh, that guy's from Houston. And he's like, oh. How did you know? And I'm like, because I'm from Texas, dude. <laughs> what do you want me to say? <laughs> America is really three things. America is New York, Los Angeles, and a lot of Texas in the middle. <laughs> None of the other states have a specific thing that we associate with them so much. I don't know okay. Florida has gotten a reputation. Uh, yeah. Florida's a little <laughs> I don't think they count. But like, you have New York, you have a ton of people in cowboy hats, and then you have LA. And... <laughs> <laughs> it's disappointing if you don't yeah, wear a cowboy hat. The middle hat. of the country is just all Texas. Yeah. Basically. That's, so that's like, the Texas German perspective. So big, it's from New wrong. York to Los Angeles. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, maybe New York Florida is just the circle. part of Texas that sticks out into the ocean. <laughs> right. You guys are in Los Angeles and um, you're, you're working and everything. Uh, wh what was the experience like for you? Like, at, at what moment did you realize that COVID was going to have an impact on you? And at what point did that become, like, very concrete? I think, well, it was actually funny. So we shot a movie just in the beginning of the year, and we wrapped it. And then we actually had a screening of another movie. So we had, like, a really good beginning to the year. You know, everything was like, yeah, 2020, this is the year. It's going great. And then it was like, oh, okay. There's starting to be the spread of a virus, and I'm just like, ah, it's not gonna be that bad. It's gonna be fine. It's fine. And then like schools are closing. I'm like, ah, oh, that's so silly. And then all of a sudden, like the countries were starting to close borders, and you wouldn't be able to travel. And then everyone's like, we should flee. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what happened. It was very cool, like going from like um, knowing that my friends uh, left the country. I can't, I can't exactly talk to them. Uh, we can't like go and visit and everything like that. But I'm getting to see what you're doing and what you're up to. But having it in a format that is meant to be entertaining to people, that was something that was really cool to watch. And I'm, I'm curious, like, when you guys initially, like, left, was that something that you were planning to do? Or when did the idea strike you? And when did it just kind of become what it is now? We, we definitely planned on having some sort of video YouTube project, but, and we actually shot some of it and it's just not very good because we would do like, we would just literally be in situations that were very German and Everett would be like, oh my God, guys, look, in Germany, there's a lot of beer you can buy. That's not, that wasn't interesting to us. So then eventually Everett just started writing scenes that were really based on conversations that we had. So the very first episode's about bread. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's, and that's the, the smallest topic that ever. Is like, right, like it is, but it was one of the things that like may have bugged me the most going to Germany and them calling the sliced bread toast before it's even toasted. It's just, that's what it's called. It's called toast. <laughs> and it says it, it on the packaging. And it says it, even says it on the packaging and, and it just bothered the, the living daylights out of me. So we find ourselves in Germany Neither of us have a job, and we were about to start doing video vlogging again, you know, just the regular simp keep it simple, but then I realized, wait, now we have the time. If we were ever to create a sitcom style show, this is the time to do it. And these, this is the way I wanted to do my YouTube channel, but we couldn't before because we had full-time jobs and could not just put the time in for it. So yeah. in a weird way, the pandemic actually gave us that opportunity. And so I, I hate saying it, but I mean, I've said it before where I'm like, wow, the pandemic's kind of one of the best things that's ever happened to us. 
But now that you're back in the U.S., like, what are you guys planning to do now? I think we've basically decided to kind of just do a spin-off where, like, you know, if there's a spin-off of a show, they always take one character, and that character already existed in your old show, and they just get put in a new world. So, okay, we took literally the two only characters from one show and put them in a new world. My biggest influence on how we on the direction we're going now is I Love Lucy, in which uh, Lucille Ball plays the American and Desi Arnaz is the foreigner, but Desi Arnaz is the one with the level head. In this case, I kind of flip it, you know, so I'm the loose cannon, um, but it's still kind of that same dynamic where the foreigner still seems to be in control <laughs> of things and, yeah. and the American idiot is... An American idiot. <laughs> and I, but I also think that's actually just reflective of our personality. Because even when, if when we're going on trips where clearly Everett should know what's happening, like we go to Texas, we go to Puerto Rico, like he should know what's going on. He'll literally be like, you know, we'll just do stuff. And I would be like, well, okay, that's just not gonna work. And so then I find out. I try to figure out what hotel we're staying at. I try to figure out what restaurants we can eat at. Unless he's like, oh yeah, this is my favorite restaurant. But most of the time, I'm making the planning. I'm like, okay, well, you know, this actually closes. He's like, oh, I didn't know that it closes. Okay. And <laughs> and, and and that's the perfect dynamic because you know the German still plays the German. You like, have to she plan. is still like super organized, and and that's what's. I think I think that's why people are enjoying our show is because of the authenticity of it. Like, I'm glad that you guys made it back. I'm glad that you guys are whole. I'm glad that you guys have this, this whole budding thing to work on because I think that's going to be a big part of a lot of people's lives. You know, you, you, took, you took lemons and you made some really delicious lemonade out of it. And, you know, it, it's becoming to a point to where there is demand for your lemonade out there. I think it also kind of comes back to like what I what the show really kind of gave us and I think also what we like the show gave to our audience is that there was sort of a sense of you made a friend maybe virtually because every time we got a comment or a really nice comment we don't know any of these people but we recognize a lot of their like YouTube names um, and their tags and so we're just we're like oh this person commented again and as much as I really do hope that we do get to that point where, oh gosh, we need to hire somebody to answer all of these comments. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, we, I really love this time that we are in right now where we can personally, you know, just talk to our fans. You know, you guys have, uh, you got a new film that's coming out this month, right? Yes. Um, That's right. Yes, we have a movie coming out uh, in America. It's being released on December 18th, and it will come out in the rest of the world sometime in 2021. Um, and so Bad Impulse is a movie that we both worked on together as a producing duo more than anything else. So it was really fun for the first time to like make a movie more from behind the camera's point of view. You know the best thing about um, Bad Impulse? Um, is that we worked together. I was the unit production manager and she was one of the producers, basically. Yeah, right? co-producer. Co-producer, because she did a lot to get, get the movie done. So she was my boss. Um, it wasn't until maybe the last week of production when people started realizing that we were married. The first AD like knew that you were married and he knew both of us oh, but separately right. and he knew you were married and then every time we talked, he was like, why are you flirting with this producer girl? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was like, like, dude, you're married, man. You should be flirting with her. You know? <laughs> I'm like, you know, I can't help it, man. <laughs> She's hot, what can I do? She reminds you know? me so much of my wife. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's great. But that's a testament so, so, to how professional we run our shows. Where where will uh, we be able to watch this? Bad Impulse is coming out on demand. Um, it's already available to pre-order on iTunes, and you'll be able to see it on Google Play, Amazon Video. It was also extra hard this year because that could have been um, a theatrical release. It was planned to be a theatrical yeah. release. But this year... There isn't going to be the a theatrical year release. year to release a movie. It really is. The game is really changing. 
I, I think ultimately there's going to be a lot of positives that come out of it, but definitely like there's a lot of strife that happens because it's a very sudden change. I mean, look at us. We're doing our show on YouTube with just us. Like here in America, we were able to uh, pull a camera guy for our first three episodes. But, you know, now that we're locked down, our remaining episodes are going to go back to just being us with our cameras. I mean, our phones. When I say cameras, I mean our phones. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, the big thing is, is you guys are working, you are creating, and that's that's one of the things that's going to come out of this is there there's going to be people who innovate um, and find ways to 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 create something to share with others, find different platforms for that, and I hope that people who haven't experienced your channel before are going to uh, search it out, they're going to experience it, they're going to find all the things to enjoy that I enjoyed. Um, and then also, uh, you know, there's, there's thousands and thousands of other stories just like that out there. So even if you feel like you're kind of like just stuck on this Island, you know, you're, you're quarantined in a bad situation that you can find something to where you can change, you can grow, you can learn and you can laugh. I don't know really what, what else to add to <laughs> yeah, that I mean, because I think you, you, like you really like, that you really, really summarize well. that perfectly. So I, <laughs> all right, brother, you take care. Okay. All right. Bye. We'll see you next you time. Too. Ciao. Right. Bye, Bye, guys. Bye.